high second and third grade. Today I am recording a video lesson for the week of May 11th. And this week we are looking at the mass and the two parts of the mass. There are two parts of the mass. The first part of the mass is called the liturgy of the word. And the second part of the mass is called the liturgy of the Eucharist. So these are the formal titles for the two parts of the mass. In the liturgy of the word, we experience or we have a encounter with an encounter with Jesus through the Bible, through the scripture. So in the liturgy of the word, we hear readings from the Bible and we come to learn more about Jesus and his love for us through those stories and through those readings from the Bible. And the second part of the Mass, the Liturgy of the Eucharist, give me one second, we encounter, we come to experience Jesus through the Eucharist, through the bread and the wine that are no longer bread and wine, but the body and blood of Jesus. So there are two powerful ways that we encounter Jesus at Mass, through the Word, through the Bible, through the Scripture, and then through the Eucharist, through his body, blood, soul, and divinity. And so we say that when we hear the words of the Bible, that helps to open our heart to receive Jesus truly present in the Eucharist. Now, I want to read for you the readings that you have in your worksheet. So what could be helpful is if you actually pause the video and get the worksheet for this week so that you can read along with me because I think that this will help you and together we can learn about these two special parts of the Mass. So the first part of the Mass, the Liturgy of the Word, so I'm looking at the reading that starts on page 367 that you have as part of your packet for the week. The Liturgy of the Word is the first part of Mass. We hear the written word of God in the liturgy of the word. We also pray together as God's people. The liturgy of the word has many parts. Let's learn about some of the most important parts. Readings from scripture. Sunday masses have four readings from scripture. Number one, the first reading, usually a Bible reading from the Old Testament. The Old Testament announces that Christ is coming for our salvation, to save us from sin and to open the gates of heaven. The stories of the Old Testament help to prepare us for salvation, for being saved from sin and getting us to heaven. Number two, responsorial psalm. A psalm is a song that's meant to be sung in worship. There are 150 psalms in the Old Testament. At Mass, the song leader invites us to sing a line from a psalm together as church. So when we have school Mass, usually students read the psalm, but at Sunday Mass, usually somebody will sing the responsorial psalm. Number three, second reading. A reading from the New Testament other than the Gospels. The New Testament is about Jesus and his church. The stories of the New Testament we hear in the second reading tell us about how the early church shared the good news of salvation with others, how Jesus came to save us from sin and open the gates of heaven. Number four, gospel. A reading from one of the four gospels in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. The gospels tell us the story of Jesus' life. They are the most important part of the liturgy of the word. Number five, homily. After the gospel, the priest teaches us about the readings from the Bible and invites us to follow Jesus. So the homily is how the priest teaches us about how the readings from the Bible can help us in our life to get closer to Jesus and be like Jesus. Number six, profession of faith. So at Sunday Mass, after the homily, we stand together as a church and we say usually the Nicene Creed. The Nicene Creed is a prayer that states all we believe as Catholics. Starts, starts, I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, etc., etc. So there's the Nicene Creed and the Apostles' Creed. Um, I think I just mixed them up. What I just told you was the Apostles' Creed. The Nicene Creed is, I believe in God. I believe in God. Hmm. Let me pause and um, get the right words for you. Hold on one second. All right, friends, I found the words. I'm sorry, I was confused. So the Nicene Creed starts, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Remember how we learned about consubstantial? Well, that word is in the Nicene Creed. So the Nicene Creed, the profession of faith, is the sixth part of the Liturgy of the Word. And then, part seven, we have the prayer of the faithful. And usually when we have school mass, the students do this. Together as a church, we pray for our needs and the needs of the world. So that's the Liturgy of the Word. So after you've read that part with me, you're going to do the Liturgy of the Word word sort. You've got a word box there, and you match the word with a different description of the part from the Liturgy of the Word. Now, I want to read with you, to help you, the Liturgy of the Eucharist. So this is the next part of your packet, and I'm going to read this part with you as well to help you to prepare to do the worksheet. So, the Liturgy of the Eucharist is the second part of Mass. The Liturgy of the Eucharist is the heart of the Mass, the most important part. During this part of Mass, the priest acts in persona Christi capitas, which is the Latin words for in the person of Christ the head. That means that Jesus himself works through the priest to change the bread and wine into the body and blood of Jesus. Then we receive Christ in the Eucharist. The Liturgy of the Eucharist has many parts. Let's learn about some of the most important parts. Part 1. The Offertory A few people are chosen to bring the bread and wine to the altar as gifts. We do this at our school mass. We also give money to help the church and the poor. The priest gets the altar ready and prays over the gifts. During this time, our own prayers are given to God. 2. The Eucharistic Prayer This prayer has a few parts. The priest prays a special prayer of thanksgiving. He asks the Father, God the Father, to send his Holy Spirit to bless the bread and wine. Then the priest repeats the words of Jesus at the Last Supper. The bread becomes the body of Christ and the wine becomes the blood of Christ. During the parts of the Eucharistic prayer, we kneel to show our reverence, to show our respect and love. Part three that we talk about, the holy, holy, holy. The church praises God together. The words of this prayer are the same words the people of Jerusalem prayed when Jesus came into the city before he was crucified. Part four, the mystery of faith. The church states that we believe that the Eucharist is a memorial, a reliving of Christ's suffering and death. Part five, the Lord's prayer. The church prays the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Our Father. So at Mass, we all pray the Our Father together. Part 6, the sign of peace. The priest offers us the peace of the Lord. We may offer others a sign of peace and mercy. So at school Mass, we shake hands and say, peace be with you. Right now, or right before we had to shelter in place, we weren't able to shake hands anymore because of COVID. But one day we'll be able to shake hands again and say, peace be with you at church. Part seven, the Lamb of God, the church prays the mercy for the mercy and peace of Christ. So that's when we say, Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us at, at Mass. Part eight, Holy Communion. We go up to the altar and receive the Eucharist. This moment is the highest point of our Christian worship. Receiving the Eucharist is the most powerful moment for us in our prayer and our worship because we literally receive Jesus into our bodies. It's the most powerful and special moment. 
So that is the Liturgy of the Eucharist. So now you'll be able to do the worksheet Liturgy of the Eucharist Word Sort. There's a word box and you can match it with the different descriptions for those parts of the Liturgy of the Eucharist. Make sure that you look back at your packet at that article we just read to help you. All right, boys and girls, I'm going to stop our video there. At the end of this video, I'm going to add a video I made with Sister Stephanie about how we receive the Eucharist at Mass. So the video will be a little bit longer. There are three parts in total. We did the first part, the Liturgy of the Word, second part, Liturgy of the Eucharist, and the third part will be how to receive the Eucharist. And we'll review that together in class that we have for Zoom this week. All right, boys and girls, make sure that you bring these worksheets with you to Mass so that you, I'm sorry, make sure you bring these worksheets with you to our Zoom class so that we can go over them if you have any questions. All right, God bless you guys. I'll see you in Zoom. Bye. Hi, everybody. Hello. St. Sylvester's and BBM. We are going to learn today how to receive the Eucharist um, with reverence, meaning that we're respecting that the Eucharist is Jesus. So we're going to learn the proper way to receive the Eucharist, which is obviously very special because the Eucharist is Jesus. So there's a very special way to receive the Eucharist. We make sure that we are remembering that it's Jesus and that we um, receive him properly and prayerfully. So we're going to learn how to do that today. So we're excited. So um, I'm not sure what's, what's, what's going on with BBM, but next week, third grade, we're going to meet on Zoom and we're going to do this together. So this is going to be very exciting. So, but this is the little intro week and then we'll do this next week uh, together on the Zooms. All right. So, um, as we know, hey, Sister Lisa, when do we receive the Eucharist at Mass? We receive the Eucharist at Mass during communion. Yes, right. So it's all near the end of Mass, as you know. Every, until now, everyone's just been, you guys have had to sit. But now you guys get to get in line and, and, get, and receive, get ready to receive the Eucharist. So when you get in line, um, before you get in line, actually, we should be praying. And then when you're in line, we're going to keep praying. We're going to ask Jesus because he's going to be coming inside of us. We ask Jesus to be with us. We ask Jesus, give me the graces uh, that you'd like to give me today and help me to be open to the grace that you'd like me to receive. So we're praying while we're in line. When we're in line. We have our hands folded. We're not poking our neighbor. We're not like, um, you know, messing around with our brothers and sisters or people at school if it's school mass. We're praying. We're taking our time to pray. Um, then when we get near the front, when the person in front of us is receiving the Eucharist, we're going to bow. Like we're going to we're going to put our heads down like this. We're going to bow. And then we get up to the priest or the deacon or, or the person giving out the Eucharist. Um, we're going to put our hands out like this. Okay. See our hands are like this. All right. Now I'm going to give Sister Alicia the this is this is not a consecrated host. This is just the bread before it was has never been at mass. So it is just the piece of bread. But we're going to pretend that it's the Eucharist, okay? So the priest or the person giving the Eucharist is going to say the body of Christ. Amen. And if she, I'm putting the Eucharist right there on her hand, on the top hand, on one hand, not both hands. And then she's going to pick up the Eucharist and put it in her mouth. Very good. And then after she receives the Eucharist, she's going to make the sign of the cross. Very good. And then she's going to walk back to her seat uh, prayerfully like she walked up with the hands folded and um, taking time to pray. Hey, then what, when you go back to your seat after receiving the Eucharist, what do you do? Uh, so after I receive the Eucharist, I go back to my pew and I kneel down um, and I usually close my eyes and bow my head and try to talk to Jesus and thank him for coming to me. But then also like I could be like, Jesus, please help me to remember that you're with me all day, that I'm not alone. Please help me to be kind, especially to the people that make me really annoyed. So I can ask Jesus to help me with things, but also tell him that I love him, right? Because it's not just about me and what I get, but I also want to give my love to Jesus because he gives me everything. That's great. Yeah. So we're going to be writing some prayers that we can say after we receive the Eucharist that we write in our own words later, in, at least for the St. Sylvester's class. Um, yeah. Do we want to look at it one more time? Do you want to give it to, do you want to do it oh, this time? Sure. Oh yeah. All right. Great. So Lisa's going to narrate this time how we do this. So we're going, uh, you're getting out of our pew and remember, like we call this a procession and processions are always something special to be a part of. 
So it's not like, you know, we're just hanging out or walking, but it's actually this very special together going up to see Jesus and receive Jesus. So when you get out of your pew, it's when you should fold your hands like this or like this, and you walk up in that line. And then right before you receive Jesus in the Eucharist, um, when the person in front of you receives, then you bow to show reverence or respect to Jesus. And then when it's your turn, you want to make sure that your hands are out appropriately. And then the priest or the deacon or whoever is being the minister of the Eucharist says the body of Christ. Amen. And they put it in your hand. Then you consume, make the sign of the cross, and then you go back to your pew. Um, I think that a lot of our students, especially the part where they get really distracted is the going back to their pew part, right? Because it's kind of, it's very mysterious. Like, you know, it tastes like bread, but it's really Jesus. So it's easy to forget that Jesus is really, really, really in us. So we want to work really hard to remember that those minutes after we receive the Eucharist are the most special minutes of our whole day. And we want to give ourselves a chance to be close to Jesus not only to talk to him, but to listen to him in our heart. Amen. That's great. Um, so we also know that we, neither school knows when we're going to have First Communion at this point. Um, but we're doing this now because it, we're if, if we're able to have First Communion during the summer, then we are super ready. So, um, and this is good because now you'll know what you're going to be doing so that we can take time to pray to keep preparing for First Communion, even though we don't know when it's going to totally be yet. Yeah, Jesus is really proud of all of you for keeping up with learning about the Eucharist and getting ready for First Communion. And we and the school communities and the parishes are really committed to making it the most special day for you, um, even though we have to wait. So waiting is not a bad thing. It actually can make our hearts want Jesus more. So it's a special gift, even though it's a hard gift. So we can do this together. Amen. God bless you guys. Bye, guys. <laughs>